Hello, my fellow MMA super fans. My name is Nisi Ikashano, and today we are joined by a man who needs no introduction to many fans in the world of combat sports. He's perhaps the greatest to ever grace the jiu-jitsu mats, and he is now regarded as a rising contender in the heavyweight division of one championship. Ladies and gentlemen, Marcus Bushesha Almeida. Professor, glad to have you on the program. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction, and thank you very much the, for the invitation. My pleasure to be here. First of all, how are you? How are things going down there? Everything's going great. Training's going good. It's been a while since I, I fought almost a year. So really, really glad to have the fight book, and I really can't wait for that. So eight more weeks to go. Yeah. And counting. Yeah, that's actually nice. I've noticed that you managed to take a break a bit from training camp. And you were, you attended the Mundials most recently. Was it like now that you get to be part of the festivities as a spectator? Yeah, no, for sure. It was like a really different feeling to be there just watching this time. But it was good, you know, because... Now I had the feeling that all my friends used to have for me because they cheering, they like yelling and lady like <laughs> fighting with me. So I got two friends that won from my team, uh, somewhere on a guy and Jansé Gomes. So yeah. we was really happy to watch them winning and to keep it like, uh, you know, the 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 world championship for the Czech mat alive. Right. So it's like it's really cool. Well, congratulations. But you know, seeing all the action at the Mundials and the brilliant roster of talent competing on the mats, don't you get the itch to step back on the mat? It must be hard for a competitive guy like you. No, nah, not really, because like I feel like my mission in Jiu Jitsu is like done, mm. especially with the Gi. Yeah. I have like done so much and I have done like something that nobody ever done in the whole planet. So yeah. I put my name in the history books of this place. <laughs> and I don't feel like no one that I really want to face, I really want to fight anymore. Yeah. So like it was like a like a like a mission accomplishment uh feeling you know what i mean yeah uh it cannot be denied that you know jiu jitsu plays a crucial role in mixed martial arts but with all the accolades the accolades you've accomplished in jiu jitsu alone there's some sort of hype surrounding it and what you did in the past as a jiu jitsu athlete is now the bar not just for jiu-jitsu athletes, but jiu-jitsu athletes transitioning to MMA. Some people may see, may some people may see it as a form of pressure uh, on your part. Others may perceive it as a blessing. But let me ask, how about you at this point in your career? So it was breaking. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. Uh, you know, so the accolades. You know, uh, as as an athlete of jiu-jitsu, it brings some sort of hype. Right, uh, for you on your part, what you uh, what you did in the past is now they see it as a gold standard, not just for jiu jitsu athletes, but jiu jitsu athletes jumping into MMA. Some people may see it as a pressure, some form of pressure on your part. Others may perceive it as a blessing. But how about you? What's your take on this? I'm being honest, it's a different sport, of course. I have a lot of experience from jiu-jitsu, but yeah. it doesn't translate to MMA. So, of course, it's a new sport, and I feel like a rookie in this yeah. sport. And that's how I see myself, so I don't feel any pressure. Of course, but jiu-jitsu is my biggest strength, so yeah. always I, I, I will try to use it. But my world titles doesn't mean, like, because I have world titles, I have to be, like, you know, uh, the favorite or anything like that. So 
it's a new sport it's a different sport of course i got experience it's like a big strength for me but i don't see like of course it's a blessing but i don't see as a pressure it's more of for on your part right now it's more of enjoying it rather than sulking into the perception of many now that you transition to mma yeah yeah exactly it's, yeah I'm enjoying my time. I'm taking my time. I'm, I'm enjoying the process, and it's been really good. I'm yeah. really enjoying learning like new uh, martial arts, like Muay Thai boxing, like getting my wrestling much better. So I'm just having a good time. You know, uh, for years you competed at the highest level of jiu-jitsu, and in 2021 you finally transition to a most a multifaceted sport like MMA at what point in the previous four fights that you had that you felt that the tag of being a jiu-jitsu athlete was removed and you can call yourself finally as a full-fledged mixed martial artist uh, since before this first fight because I I didn't feel that in the fight I felt that during the training I think this You know, I mean, the, the fight is the easiest part mm. because the training is, like, so hard. The yeah. fight, you go there, you have, like, 15 minutes to work. But yeah. before that, it was, like, before my debut mm. was, like, over a year of training. Yeah. So that was, like, when I felt, like, okay, it's something mm. new. I'm not doing this just for fun, just for, yeah. like, one, one shot. No, I'm doing this for real. I changed my life. Yeah. And everything is, like, for that so it was like even before the first fight that leads me to my next question because there had been chatter of you jumping to mma as early as 2015 if i'm not mistaken but it took you five years to find a promotion that would serve as a platform for your mma debut and that is one championship But it didn't stop there. It had tribulations along the way before you actually had your debut and get and get the victory. It was, if I would describe it, it was full of twists and turns. Looking back, uh, Professor, can you say that you're really destined to do this as a mixed martial artist? Uh, no, because in 2015, I had a plan. To, yeah. to win that year and then go to, straight to MMA. Yeah. But an uh, injury happened and I had to do like a knee surgery that changed all my plans. So, yeah. And I had like, in my head, I had to fight at least one more year. So when yeah. I fought 2016, yeah. I felt so good. Plus with my conversation yeah. with the, like the, organi the MMA organizations was like yeah. not good. Yeah. Of course, wasn't uh, one at the time, so I didn't really like it the way I was treated. So, yeah. so you know what? If I just go in there to be treated as everyone else, so I don't yeah. want that. And when I went to when I went to talk to one championship, the mm -hmm. talk was totally different. Mm -hmm. They recognized me as a martial artist and as a world champion, yes. and so I felt one championship was the perfect place for me. And that's yeah. why I'm there. And that's why I'm happy there. Yeah. I think it work, It all worked together. Now, finally, after a year, you're returning to action at One Fight Night 13 on August 5 in Asia, August, August 4 in the United States. How excited are you to get back inside the ring? Yeah. Actually, that's going to be the first time inside the ring, right? It's not yeah. going to be the octagon. So mm -hmm. really excited for that. I remember watching like Pride Days and that's what <laughs> yeah. I grew up watching. And I always wanted to fight in a in a ring. Yeah. So three arenas that I always wanted to fight was like uh, Lupini in yeah. Thailand, right? Bangkok, uh, Saitama Arena in Japan yeah. and Madison Square Garden. So that was like my three uh dream arenas to fight so i'm fighting one of those <laughs> so it's being like a dream come true so after that two more to go <laughs> yeah two two more to go now yeah you were supposed to have your debut 
uh, you have you a few years ago, two years ago, you were supposed to have your debut against Umar Rugru Kane in twenty twenty one. Are you happy that you will finally get your hands on Rugru this time around in your fifth fight as a pro? Be honest, I don't really care about that. Like, I just want to go there and fight somebody. Like, I don't care. Like, uh, the opponent. It's supposed to happen before, but it didn't. Uh, he got hurt. And he got injured like twice, and we had to postpone. Yeah. And but the organization always wants to do this: the Senegal mm -hmm. wrestling against the uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So, for me, it's cool. But like being honest, I'm trying to fight. So either Rugu Rugu or anyone there. So I don't really focus anymore so much in the in the opponent. Because it changed every fight, it changes so much. Just the last fight that didn't change, yeah. and the second one, since I signed the contract, kept the same. So yeah. it was a lot of frustration in the beginning. Yeah. But now, if I fight him, awesome. I'm trying to fight him. But if it got changed in the fight yeah. week, I'll be ready for that too. So uh, it's not gonna like yeah, be yeah, a let's... problem for me. Yeah. Now let's talk about Rug Rug. Rug Rug has been advertised as a strong force uh, from Senegal. He has uh, she, uh, he has a five one five and one record. Uh, but in my humble opinion, my humble opinion, he hasn't lived up to that hype yet in one championship. But how about you? Do you feel the same regarding Rug Rug? No, I think he's a great guy. He fought tough opponents. Um, he <laughs> fought like a really high, high, uh, high level athletes. Yeah. And he got a lot of wins on one championship. I'm not sure how many, but he got like at least like three wins on on one cage. Yeah. On one. So he is like legit, a uh, high level fighter. And that's how I treat him. A mm -hmm. tough fight, a tough opponent. Yeah. I'm training a lot for that. That's my best way to show respect for my opponent. Training yeah. as hard as I can. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, what do you see as the strong st the strong traits of Rogue Rogue that you need to keep an eye on come fight night? Uh, he's big. He's strong. Uh, heavy hands and yeah. like really good base. So yeah. I'll be watching for all of that for sure. Real explosive, yeah. so will be a really interesting match for sure. At the same time, what do you think is the Achilles heel of Rug Rug, or the weakness, or the weak spots that you plan to expose come fight day? I'll I'll find out there. <laughs> Keeping it a secret right now. Uh, right now. Uh, you know your fight on August five will be held. On the morning of a Saturday, uh, how do you plan to do that? The adjustments now, or do you do the adjustments right now in training camp for you to get ready for that time, the, the time zone, uh, the weather conditions, and so on and so forth? Oh, really? Uh, yeah. last time was the same thing when I fought, uh, when I fought my last fight, mm -hmm. it was exactly the same thing. I yeah. fought in Singapore, but was more, it uh, was night, Friday night for. Yeah. US, so yeah. yeah, it's the time that I training. I train in the morning. I just done sparring, so yeah. my body is like you really used to mm -hmm. to brawl in the morning. So mm -hmm. it's not gonna be a problem for me. Yeah. So given everything you said, how do you see this ending between you and Rug Rug this 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 coming August? You know, I'm doing everything to get the job done in the first round. So if yeah. I can get that, that would be great yeah. for me. But uh, he's a tough guy, tough opponent. And if we have to go distance and go three rounds, I'll be ready for that. Yeah. If we have to like wrestle, if we have to uh, boxing or like ground, of course, I want to finish in the first round. But if I don't get that, I'll be ready to, to, do, to do the three rounds with him, whatever, like whatever situation the fight goes. All right. If you win this fight, Professor, it's win number five for you. Do you honestly think that the shot at the world heavyweight title will be next after this? 
I'm being honest, I never really think about the next fight. I think about this one. So I have to think about now. So yeah. and I'm not the kind of guy that think too much ahead. Think about yeah. today and not yeah. tomorrow. So today my opponent is Rogue Rogue. So that's my uh, my focus. And after that, we think about the next step. Okay. Speaking of the world heavyweight title, there is a unification fight happening later this month. I have to ask this. What's your honest to goodness assessment of the fight between Anatoly Malikin and Arjun Bular for all the marbles? Later this month, there will be an undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Being honest, I hope that fight finally happened. Because <laughs> you... <laughs> no, yeah. because he yeah. got push it so many times so yeah. I got well, I was like yeah. excited to watch it so many times and, and yeah. keep pushing pushing and yeah. uh so many different reasons yeah. but that's why I hope it finally like really happened yeah and it's gonna be a really good one because uh I know that's what Natalia wants to to yeah. do it for a long time yeah and he's like keeping really active yeah and Arjun since like his last fight was against Brandon Vera yeah. Almost three years ago, right? It's been yeah. a long time. And for yeah. a fighter, for a professional fighter to be inactive for so long, I yeah. think that's a huge uh, disadvantage. So I think right now, Anatoly, I think, has the biggest advantage because he, he kept like he kept himself so active. Yeah. And fighting after fighting and just winning, the guy still undefeated. If I'm not wrong, Arjun has just one defeat. Yeah. And so it's going to be a really, really good fight. So finally, they're going to unify the world title, yeah. the heavyweight world title. So yeah. it's going to be who is the baddest uh, man baddest of the organization. Man. Yeah, I agree. So this fight was almost two years in the making. And But let me ask this. Do you think, you know, with all of the cancellation, the postponements, do you think it helped the fight in terms of steering, excitement, and anticipation? Or do you honestly think it held back the division? Uh, I don't know. Like, uh, hard to say. For sure, hold Anatoly back, for sure, because that was something that he wanted for so long. Yeah. But the organ the all the rest of the division kept fighting. I think the yeah. only one who like was holding back was Anatoly because yeah. he to keep him active he had to go down to the division right but he yeah. found he found a way to keep yeah. active so yeah. he cut weight and fought the division below yeah. to keep active so I think the only one who got really hurt yeah. was Anatoly and the organization so because. It was a fight that everybody was waiting for, for so long to watch, and finally it's happened. So yeah. I think I hope it didn't it don't get pushed after like anymore, you know. So I really hope it happened this month. Yeah. So when is that? This month, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ju June twenty third. Actually, we're crossing oh, our yeah. fingers. Like I'm not I'm not believing it until they they're inside the inside the ring. Uh, so. Um, I'm with you. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> well, let me ask uh, your prediction for this fight. Uh, Anatoly Malikin versus uh, Arjun Buller. They have a really similar game because they are really good wrestlers and really good hands. So they have like fast hands. And I think Anatoly hits harder, but, uh, but Arjun is like really technical, like has yeah. a really good jab and control the distance really well. Yeah. So I don't know if they're going to shot. So for me, in my opinion, that's going to be like 100% like a brawl. No yeah. shooting because nobody want to waste energy and yeah. like somebody like getting defended. So I think it's going to be a, like a boxing match, a yeah. boxing fight. Yeah. And like I said, because of the advantage of the time, I think Anatoly has an advantage. Okay. So it's Probably because, gonna end by knockout. I think so because five rounds it's yeah. too long. Yeah. So probably gonna end up by a knockout 
or probably like a TKO for it's it one hand could, could change the fight. Yeah. But I mean, like of course Arjun has like really uh, good hands too, heavy hands. But I think if you go to the distance because of the being of being more active, I think goes more to Anatolis. Uh, um, favor. favor, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Arjun Buller mentioned your name in an interview as a possible op opponent. But let me ask, you know, I know you're focused now on Rug Rug, but let me let me just, you know, work with your personal preferences. If they will allow you to choose between Buller and Anatoly Malikin, who do you want to face next? Being honest. Yeah. Whoever wins, right? Yeah. So like, if I have to pick Whoever one of those. Whoever holds the title. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. not necessarily like being my next fight. But if I have to choose, probably like whoever like wins this fight. Let's put it in a hypothetical situation. Let's say Malikin wins the fight against Arjun Buller and you get the title shot next just to raise the stakes. Let's say one puts the light heavyweight title on the line as well. Do you think it's that that's a bright idea to slug it out for all the marbles? You and Anatoly Malikin? Uh, being honest, I think uh, it could be could it could happen, but I, I'm not in rush. It doesn't need to be in my like next fight. So, like I said, I just have I have just uh, four fights. So I'm going for my fifth fight. So they, they all, both of them have over like ten fights. So of course they have more experience than me. Yeah. If you watch, if you like, compare like my record and against their their record, they fought like in sl yeah. uh, smaller organizations. So yeah. he, they had more time to get experience yeah. in the cage and in the gym. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm getting experience, and the time will come soon for sure. Whenever the organization says. It's time. I'll be ready for for that. And but that's a it's gonna be a talk between them and Ali Abdeladiz, my manager, yeah. and my coaches. Well, we're looking forward to that. Anyway, thank you so much for the time, Professor. But before you leave, I'm giving you the floor to thank all your fans and supporters. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone who who support me and. Uh, like what I'm doing inside and outside the cage. So I really appreciate the support of everyone. I get a lot of love in my social media when I'm fighting as well. So I really appreciate that. And I hope I can keep like giving everyone what they expect me to, to watch inside the cage. All right. Once again, the one and only Marcus Bushesha Almeida. Thank you, Professor. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Great to be here. That's it for all of us here on the MMA Superfan. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and also hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all of the latest content from the MMA Superfan. Again, I'm Nisi Kashano. Till next time.